All right, that's the news update now. Uh, let's get into our first big story. The National Broadcasting Commission has launched its free TV network in Abuja. NBC Hellsman says that with the launch, the federal government's digital switch over target of June 2017 is gradually coming on stream. All right, now correspondent TVC News, uh, Somna Sambo, has more on that report. In April, the Nigerian government launched a pilot program on the digital switch over of television signals in the city of Jos, Plateau State. It is now kicking off a state-by-state -state rollout, starting with Abuja. <laughs> the nation's broadcasting commission urges Nigerians to take advantage of the exercise or risk not watching terrestrial television by mid-2017. With the switch on in Abuja, we're actually beginning the, the, the switch off of analog television in our country. And we're providing services that are related to this digital system. Uh, on the one hand, people are going to start watching about 30 television channels in the federal capital territory. In, uh, in Jaws, we give them 15 channels. When the switch off happens, if you don't have the set of box, the free TV box, you'll be cut off, you'll be able to watch television in Nigeria. When it goes the full circle, no TV station will be transmitting anymore, and therefore it is imperative that every Nigerian get the set of box. The authorities also urge content producers and other talented individuals to key into the initiative as part of government's plans for the creative industry. Digital television will open this opportunity of a digital economy where our young people will then get opportunities to be creative uh, people in in productions, in, uh, as directors, as all the different uh, genres of all different areas, they, the whole value system of media. 70% of content now would have to be local. One of the things we are looking at at NBC is that when we begin to collect the digital access fund, we are going to create a national uh, content development fund, which will be a huge amount of money. And we are hoping that we can then keep the money away outside of the NBC to be run by very prominent Nigerians and then the money would then be available to young people to be able to produce content around Nigeria. Top NBC officials were later conducted around the premises of the television distribution network, jointly operated by the government and a private firm. Somna Sambo, TVC News, Abuja. All right, that's the uh, foundation of our discussion this morning. We have joining us uh, journalist Janet Mbaafolabi. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to see you. Good to be here too. All right. Now, when they talk about uh, analog broadcasting, digital broadcasting, well, one thing in the mind of people is just science. But when you, when you have to narrow it down to the understanding of an average man, what does it really mean to... To swap to, need to move from analog broadcasting to digital broadcasting. Okay, I will want to describe it this way, maybe with a, a motor car. Okay. You know, before now we used to have manual. Most of the vehicles used to be manual, right. and then we had automatic. Automatic is just put it in the drive and it goes. Mm. But manual, you have to change from gear one to two to three to four to five mm. and to reverse, which was a lot of people did not quite understand it. So it's the same thing with digital and analog uh, now. Analog is obsolete, is cumbersome, is not efficient, but digital is computerized. So what they are saying in essence is that the broadcasting signals are going to move from analog of what we used to have to digital. And this is a journey that actually started in 2006 in Geneva. There was an international telecommunication union conference and at that meeting it was agreed that every country all over the world should switch over to digital well, what was the reason the reason is that the sign the signal were interfering were interfering from country to country so they wanted to prevent a situation where there will be signal interference it's like when you're flying you know, there are certain signals that interfere on air. So they will tell you, please switch off your cell phones, 
switch off your mm. uh, everything so that it does not interfere with okay. the signals on all right. air. All right, Let, let's, let's come back to you on this shortly, uh, Janet. Let's go on a break and we'll come back to do more on this. We're just starting uh, the digital discourse on TVC Breakfast. Stay with us. All right, many thanks for staying with us. It is still TVC Breakfast, and we are looking at a digitization of broadcasting that's a turning switching from analog to digital signals in this part of the divide. The, the deadline really is uh, next year, uh, June 2017, but Nigeria is working hard to ensure that becomes a reality. And with us in the studio is a journalist, Janet, and we are looking at a digitization of broadcasting that's a turning switching from analog to digital signals in this part of the divide. The, the deadline really is uh, next year, uh, June 2017, but Nigeria is working hard to ensure that becomes a reality. And with us in the studio is a journalist, Janet Mba Afolabi. So just before we went on break, you were telling us the reason why the Geneva Convention held. Yes, I said the basic reason is signal interference from other countries, because with digital information, it is easier to store, it is easier to transmit, and it is easier to access. And Nigeria was actually given, the first deadline was 2015. Nigeria did not meet the deadline. So many reasons came up, poor funding, non-cooperation, and all that. Nobody actually knows the real reason. However, the point is that they were not able to meet it. Nobody now, knew. Let me, what let me I'm trying to say is that there were different reasons. Yes, and there was no cogent reason. Yes, there was no cogent. Some said it was poor funding. Then some other people... But as a journalist, what do you think? From I the think there was lack of cooperation or deep understanding of what the benefits of digital broadcasting will bring to Nigeria. Mm. So maybe that was why there was disjointed uh, efforts. The efforts were not coerced into one and then um, it flopped. Well, all the stakeholders couldn't really they didn't work come together. together. Mm. So, but now we have made the first step. It was launched in April. They are still moving to other places. And it is expected that by June, like you said, June 2017, Nigeria will be able to achieve analog switch off. They would have completed the switch, the digital switch over, and then achieve analog switch off completely. And there are lots of benefits. There is going to be job creation and wealth creation. There's going to be lots of local content. And there's going to be 30 free to air stations. You don't need to subscribe. Just tune in, the best news, the best sport, the best entertainment are there for you. And our youths now will have to put on their thinking caps, their creativity caps, and see what they can do for themselves and for the country and to inspire other youths. So those are some of the benefits of this digital. Okay, walk us through how it works, because it's, you have the, the SDBS, yes, the set of set and the distribution channels, and walk us through all of that. The costs? No, walk us through how it works. You have the, 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 the whole process. How does it work? Okay, the whole process is once you have, once you switch to digital, you have the uh, boxes, which is distributed like the decoders, and then you switch on your digital TV. The only cost will be that some TVs may not <laughs> be able to, you know, adapt if to the system. You are system. not compliant. Yes, you are, may not so be you compliant. May have to get new you TV may have to sets. buy, and the, the least, the minimum or the cheapest is three hundred dollars. And if you multiply that by the current rate of dollar, that's about a uh, one thirty thousand or more. So you, you look at the cost. So there is cost implication. But well, some people may overlook it, considering the fact that it's going to be free, free thirty stations for you at the end of the day. And it's because of the high rate of dollar in Nigeria. Maybe outside Nigeria, the cost will still remain three hundred dollars. Oh, all right. Now the 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 fact this is not the first time Nigeria is setting the, the date to meet uh, the switchover. I remember when the date was in 2015, Nigeria tried to beat it by they setting did. it earlier to 2012. Mm. And we failed twice to meet the, the time we allotted to switching over. Mm. How realistic would it be now to say 2017 will be the day where we will switch over? When we just started in Jos, we just moved to Abuja, there's still so much of Nigeria to capture. 36 states mm. of Nigeria, if they determine, they could do it. If it's about determination, you know, where there is a will, there will always be a way. Mm. I think these governments, maybe they determined, 
That is why they even brought it and launched it in just, at least they've taken a step. They are just, Nigeria is one of the few African countries that has done But we that. don't have a choice, do we? We don't even have a choice, really. Why do you say we don't have a choice? Do we have a choice not to you make have a choice if okay? You have a choice. If you don't have the funds, if you don't have the cooperation, what do you do? And we failed you it two times. You maintain status quo. Yes, we failed <laughs> it two times. The only thing is that the, 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 the digital, the broadcasting signals will always be interfered from other countries. So it will not be clear. The pictures will not be clear. The sound will not have good quality. So you keep managing with those uh, disadvantages until... Well, we just hope that the government will be able to meet the deadline by 2000. It's June. June is still a while. Mm. Mm. Okay. Now, wh when you said you said that uh, jobs, the switch over to digital, yes. will create more jobs. How would it translate to more jobs? It because at this time, to more sorry, jobs sorry, at this time, we're still saying not so many Nigerians even understand what this digital thing is all about. So how would it translate into jobs? They will get to understand because digital is a kind of democratization of the right to know, okay. the right to knowledge, and the, uh, the, the right to understand what is going around the world. Yeah, so that's so, what the Minister of Information said? Uh, yes, that's what he said. And so if we have to go by that, it's going to translate into more jobs because already in just two, 450 youths, have already been temporarily employed for this purpose. And I'm sure they're going to train them to understand it and see how they can use it for their own benefit. It's going to create jobs because we have 30 free to air stations and they, they, there'll be lots of local content. There'll be lots of stations that'll be speaking vernacular. Mm -hmm. So you have Igbo. So even if you don't understand English, you can bring short stories, short films, and it will be so remade. Talk, even talking about content production now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Uh, so it's I, going to. It's, I, I am. I am. I am very interested in the content uh, production. We'll, we'll come to that okay. anyway. <laughs> now the the switch to digital broadcasting or digital terrestrial television, they call DTT, became the necessity for Nigeria after the International Broadcast Union Agreement of 2006 in Geneva. Uh, Janet talked about that earlier on. Now the agreement mandates all countries to switch over to avoid bad signals. Now the first phase of the digitization process took off in just that's in Plateau State capital after about 10 years in the near doldrums. Uh, prior to the digitization plan, Nigeria had four national network carriers, which are AIT, that's the Africa Independent Television uh, Channels, TV, STV, and of course, the almighty NTA. Mm. And these uh, channels you can tune in into and without paying any fee, you can watch what is going on. But with digitization, Nigerians will now be able to watch Wait for it. Mm -hmm. 30, Thirty more channels. <laughs> there will be national and free, and TVC News is already one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the digital terrestrial uh, television, the DTT Nigeria, is expected to be the largest in the world compared to UK, that has 10 million subscribers already. Australia with 13 million subscribers, and New Zealand with 3 million. Nigeria is expected to have about 30 million free TV households by the time we completely switch over from uh, analog to digital. That would be the largest so far, mm. even larger than what we have in the UK. Exactly. UK has about 10 million, mm -hmm. okay, about the largest mm -hmm. right now. So let's look at some of the benefits Nigerians are expected to get from this. The process will encourage many of our young, talented youths in the area of content production, digitization, there will be a strict division of labor which will create more jobs, that is, there will be signal distributors and then content producers. Another benefit of digital TV broadcasting is that it releases extra spectrum, which can then be used for the rollout of a G4 light. Mm. Now, the, the, that's the 4G LTE. Now, the band which this signal uh, falls is good for reaching longer distances as compared to 3G spectrum, which means fewer base stations. Now, Nigeria will need about 30 million set-up boxes for full transition to digital broadcasting. And already, some of it has been imported from 13 companies licensed to provide the boxes. 
and they already have factories established in Calabar and Port Harcourt. The companies are expected to employ not less than 2,000 Nigerians for that production. Yeah, that was part of the condition really that the manufacturers of mm. these boxes must set up their companies in Nigeria. Mm. And so talk, talking about local content really, the, you remember the president just a few weeks ago was talking about local content. The local you content. Do Nigeria. The you government has Nigeria. been very passionate about uh, local content made in Nigeria. And you know the, the economic situation right now, if you depend on importing all these set of boxes is a lot is a lot of money and yeah, it's going okay. to cost even more the forex that we don't have mm -hmm. all right so let's go, <laughs> let's go on so, so let's say some other countries that successfully switch over to digital transmission a switch over for individual countries to digital broadcasting varies in some countries it has been implemented in stages as in australia india and the united kingdom where each region has a separate date to switch off mm. The Netherlands took a different approach as she switched off all an analog services in December uh, in 2016. Uh, that's December 11th, 2006 rather. Now Rwanda, Tanzania, Kenya and Mauritius are the only African countries that have fully migrated from the analog to digital television uh, platform ahead of the global deadline of June 17, 2017. Nigeria was one of the countries that failed to meet the June 17, 2015 deadline set up by the International Telecommunications Union. The nation asked for an extension by the ITU with new focus in December 2017. I think it's uh, for her to be able, I think it's uh, June now, mm -hmm. to migrate from analog to digital transmission. All right, that's, uh, that's the basic, that's a big one. But let, let me come to you, uh, uh, Janet. When it comes to the issue of content, mm. we know mm. that there is, when, when there's a switch from analog to digital, mm. there's development, there's standardization and all of that. But let's look at the society itself. If you sit down and watch TV now, there, have, there are lots of complaints from people as to the kind of content that even children are not supposed to watch that is just out there right now. If programming is left in the hands of content makers, what will be the larger implication on the society and even the African culture? I think there will be room for competition, there will be room for people to make a choice, people will move away from those kind of contents that may, want, that may affect their children negatively, parents will be sure which uh, channel they want their children to watch and by the time they see that people are not patronizing their channels, somehow they'll get to know. They have a way of feedback, so maybe they will sit down and 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 we do what uh, their job. And you know, w from what we are saying, you actually confirm that there's going to be a lot of job creation and wealth creation. And the local content is not just in raw material. The local content is going to be in human because they're going to employ a lot of youths in every place that they they will go. And for me, I think the 30 million mentioned. Um, Nigeria, it's even small. You know, our population, we have population on our side, 160 million Nigerians. Mm. I think by the time we get to 2017 deadline, we will overshoot every other country. Okay, we'll come back to this. Let's go on a break and we come back on the program. But don't forget that we'll be going out on TVC Entertainment. Viewers there can continue with TVC Breakfast on TVC Nigeria, on Concert Channel 190 and DSTV Channel 418. Go to 45 and NC TV 510. Let's continue the conversation then. Glad to have you back. It is still TVC Breakfast and we're still talking about uh, digital broadcasting. The switchover deadline in Nigeria. Nigeria's effort to meet that deadline again. And Janet is here with us in the studio. She is a journalist. Just before we went to bring, we were talking about uh, other content production. Yes. Uh, that, uh, of course, this will create room for more content. Uh, but my, my thinking is this: Where are the content producers? Do we have them now? If we do have them now, how come we are not feeling their effect right now? Instead, Nigerians would rather patronize. Uh, content from abroad, we rather get the Western uh, content to uh, the Nigerian stream. So do you think at the end of the day, the Westerners might end up taking even the space for content production? I, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so at all because um, necessity is the mother of invention. Now we've been given the opportunity for 30 
free you've to always had the opportunity but we've not no, 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 but this is a better this is a better opportunity now they've thrown it open to you and say you don't need to subscribe you don't need to pay so just go and bring your content and i think for me it's an open check it is time for you to demonstrate that you have content in you because if you don't have content in you, you cannot give it you out you know there are some satellite so, station some some of these television stations ventured out on, on the satellite tv where you have to produce content and one or two of them i'm aware and i'm sure you're aware too mm. but after a while they closed shop something went wrong something isn't right somewhere maybe people were not subscribing why because but they were the not content, free because the content apart from some maybe of them are as free. cheap as one thousand one five perhaps the contents are not good enough for people to watch or even subscribe to uh, the other one that is even more expensive people pay people still pay because the contents are very interesting so there's a lacuna somewhere that is why we look forward to better content that is why we look forward to better pictures and better sound it could it may have to do with sound it may have to do with the pictures and it may also have to do with the message so it depends on we are 160 nigerians 160 million so you you cannot really determine how many people watch it how many people watch this you know but when we now have this 30 on ground let's have it first mm. the situation will determine what will happen i i think i think i That's agree I, I think i agree with the when you when you talk about the message and all of that i know how many people sit down to watch yoruba movies for instance a lot, a lot a, of a lot of people mm. and so it's becoming a market a very big market yes. now the Igbo movies are also there musicals are also there yeah. we have the telenovelas and and so much mm -hmm. and the although the they are not nigerian they're not nigerian yeah, so but, are, but are the point there is but, but point the, no no extent. no but what i'm what i'm saying is if you check the demographics mm. of those who really sit down at home to watch telenovelas they are the ladies Mm -hmm. If you check also yeah, the demographics exactly. of those who sit down to watch more of Yoruba movies, they are ladies. They are ladies. Do you and, understand? And so Nigerians living abroad. Exactly. And, and as we get along, I guess there'll be more of the upgrading of the standards and the messages in maybe Yoruba movies, Igbo movies, movies. Hausa movies, mm -hmm. and all of that, so that it can also meet up. And yes. then maybe it will gradually face off the, tel the telenovelas the way we have them. There are also Indian movies out mm -hmm. there that... Uh, Which is uh, almost fading out. <laughs> you cannot compare no, Indian movies. No, 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 no. You can't compare no, to when we're growing. It's not fading out. There's, there's, a, there's, 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 a, there's, a, there's a new standard now. There's a new standard. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not, surprised. It's you're been not upgraded. I don't watch, I don't watch <laughs> India. It's because, you know, a lot of people watch Indian... People of my age, mm -hmm. when we're growing, Indian movies were like the... Ultimate. Yeah, exactly. You know, but you, you knew all their you names, all the dances, all, all the songs. But my children don't watch Indian movies. Mm. They, they have moved on to other forms of Which ones but do they watch? They watch the cartoons. Do no, they? My children are not even... <laughs> They they're, watch they're music. Not children they're okay, so they are grown up. They are grown up. They are grown up now. They are grown up. They just watch their own things. They are grown up. So they don't even watch cartoons anymore. They are old, too old for cartoons. Okay. <laughs> All right, let, let's, let's, let's come back to this now. More information we need to give out there because when it comes to digitization, there's so much about it. Now, digitization is the current trend in broadcasting a digital migration. It's the transition from analog to TV, analog TV to digital terrestrial uh, uh, television broadcasting like we were talking about, which countries around the world are expected to adopt. It has to do with the transmission of digital television signal over the earth from Mars to home receivers. Digitization has numerous benefits, as Janet told us quite a lot earlier. It will ensure clearer picture quality of various programs can be aired simultaneously on one station under this technology. The TV set will have access to the internet. Great. Now, the uh, well, I think that's that's one aspect. Uh, having access to, in, to the internet, uh, we'll, we'll explain that as yes, we, we get will. along. But the International Telecommunications Union set June 17, 2015 deadline for uh, a total switchover of all broadcasting channels from analog to digital around the world. But the implication is that that analog signals from Nigerian broadcasting stations will receive no protection in the event of interference, which uh, Janet talked about earlier on, with or from digital signals from neighboring countries. That's if we refuse to switch over. Mm -hmm. Nigeria through the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, initially set June 17, 2012 as it's a switch over date three years earlier than ITU's deadline. Mm. Now Nigeria has missed the, the digital switch over deadline twice now, first in June 2012 
and later in June 2015, mainly because of inadequate funds. There were other reasons uh, responsible for that. <laughs> Janet talked about them earlier on. But Nigeria requested for an extension by the ITU. The eyes are now on June 17, 17, 2017 for Nigeria to transit from analog to digital broadcasting. A pilot migration was carried out in Just Plateau State in April using special set-top boxes to provide free digital signals of 15 broadcast stations. All right, let's, we have joining us right now, uh, Manager Technicals, TVC, uh, Nia Dewali. Ni, it's good to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, now, when it comes to digital broadcasting, there's the word terrestrial that may, sounds really familiar with a lot of people. Now, there's this, the issue of digital terrestrial broadcast, digital terrestrial TV, or transmission rather, which is a DTT. Can you explain to us, when you're talking about digital, why the terrestrial again? Yeah, uh, good morning. Good uh, morning. Uh, at the moment, uh, to a layman, if you see that the front fence of your house, uh, you hold your TV, yes. put that V-shaped antenna at the back, and you just switch on, take it to a U, if there's no TV, then start rolling those knobs, you start scrolling from 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. That's exactly what analog TV is, which means that's the one we grew. That's up the one with. we grew up to know. So uh, <laughs> the difference is this: is just you use your regular TV remote and said, okay, fine tune or such, and it scans through frequencies and gives you what you have. Uh, what makes uh, digital DTT, digital terrestrial, to be a difference is that for every signal you need, you need a setup box. Now, uh, what you have at the moment is you come into your house. Put in your antenna, for example, in states like Lagos, from 21 to 23 to 25, 27, 31, 35, 49, and so on, you select any TV you want, which means uh, frequency range from uh, UHF in Lagos, you receive various TV signals. But what the IT is looking at is how do we fully utilize the available frequency spectrums? Uh, one of the professors of telecommunications in 1989 said, as long as people continue to talk, communication and now continue to hit. So we look at it that what is the best way in ensuring that we have this limited space and we could be able to pass higher sense of signals of information through it. And that's why we look at this direction of the signal. As for example, uh, TVs for example on UHF 49, a couple of days were, uh, years back we were on channel 65. The same frequency spectrum will surprise is what Visa phone is using. So which means that we can actually use the available spectrum for maximum use. Uh, so what, what uh, the DTT will do for you is it allows you to have 30, 40 channels banded in the same frequency that you have two, three stations use. So okay. which means that you could allow more frequencies like you know there's incursion of 4G into Nigeria, mm. uh, more station, more telecoms are being licensed to do broadband services. This is what DTT will allow us to do. It will allow TV to move away from those higher frequencies to lower frequencies. So which means the, the TV signals will uh, will will be between the band that is very minimal. Uh, if you look at radio, 88 to 108.5 to 1 is about 20 megahertz, which means radio is only within a very small frequency band. They want to do the same for things in such a way that you have frequency available for other things like telemedicine, research, and all those things. So DTT, what it means is that now, henceforth, for you to have a TV signal in your room, mm. you need a box that will just decode okay. signal from the from the whoever the distributor is. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to dwell more on the issue of uh, data broadband, uh, which is internet that, like we know it. Yes. But let's go on a break. Uh, we'll come back to dwell more on this. Stay with us on TVC Breakfast. Well, if you're just joining us, you're watching TVC Breakfast, and right now we are discussing the digital transition or switch over of broadcasting in Nigeria from analog TV to uh, digital broadcasting. And we have with us in the studio Janet Mbafolabi with us. She's a journalist, and we've been doing justice to this. And we have also the manager technical TVC uh, or CBS. Uh, Obani Akinwale joining us and uh, discussing this right now. Now, uh, Janet, let me come to you on this. We have the date now, uh, yes. June 2017. Yes. What would it be? What would the consequences be if Nigeria still doesn't meet this? In, in we mentioned it earlier. The consequences is that there will be no protection for Nigeria 
if there is interference in the broadcasting signals. Okay. No protection. That means you are on your own. Will there be any sanctions? There will be no sanction, but you are on your own. When it comes to interference, you sort yourself. Whatever the problem is, you face it. You don't have to come back because we have missed two chances. This is the third chance. But I, I sincerely hope that we don't miss this third chance. Okay, all right, Nii, let's go back to the, the technical ones. We like to understand the nitty gritty. So tell us how the set top boxes works and how you now, how it works and how people will now receive the signals, the, the stage to stage um, all right. Uh, at the moment, uh, the way Nigerian Broadcasting Commission is going about is that they have a company called CCNL that handles the content aggregation. What they do is that uh, you as TVC, you as TVC News and you as TVC News Africa or TVC Entertainment, you get your signal across to CCNL, who agrees those channels. Uh, there is a company called InView that manages what your EPG looks like, what your look and feel looks like, uh, how you present your channels into those boxes. And they have another stage, the distributors, which are, uh, they have a pilot scheme in JOS and they have Pinnacle coming up on Thursday in Abuja, which means what is going to happen is that individual TV, like what we have now, you have stations and channels. Uh, TVC Entertainment is a station on UHL 49. We have a channel 801 on concert, channel 49 on GoTV and all those things. So we're going to have everybody as channels, not stations. Okay. So which means uh, if I'm going to be in my house, for example, a DTT uh, is going to be, for example, they have some, they call, based on licensing, national stations. Uh, they have some they call regional stations and some they call local stations. Uh, let me take, for example, when I was in Oboma Show, we have NT Oboma Show and we have NT Ibadan. Uh, NT Ibadan is a national station. So for me to watch NT Ibadan, I need a longer antenna. For me to watch NT Oboma Show, I need a shorter one. Okay. And for me to watch NT Ife, it should be very, very difficult, except I have a taller pole. So with DTT, you're able to aggregate those channels that are based on their licensing, either regional, local, and all those stuff. So uh, for me in Lagos, or for somebody in Abuja who expected to watch X number of national channels. So uh, call it TVC, call it NTA, call it what have you. As national stations, you have them bounded in the box. Uh, what are the stations available in Lagos State that are not out of Lagos State? Station X, Y, and Z, you bound them together for them. And as I'm saying, that are two regional, like I said. For example, in your State, you have about six, seven NTAs. So you could have all those NTAs in one box as local station, which means uh, within that geographical area, you have access to what is happening nationally, what is happening to you regionally and what's happening to you uh, locally. locally. And the DTT and the DTH, what makes them different a bit is that is the technology involved. Uh, at the moment, the, the, they both leverage on satellite in terms of contribution, okay. but the, the way the antennas are being configured are different. For DTH is like what we are used to, the multi-choice, the concert, that sat, infinite, or what have you. They use a satellite, you need the dish to receive them, but all these other guys you have, you buy a box of uh, the Go TV, the start times mm -hmm. and all those things, they run on DTH. So you being at home, you just need to get that box. And what NBC has done that I think is laudable is that to ensure that uh, you only have to pay a one-off access fee for you to be able to access about 30 channels, which means uh, it's not going to be a battle of my thing, it's going to be a battle of content. The reality is that you have to tell me a reason because I have opportunity to zap through 30 channels on a box. Mm. Unlike now that, oh, for me to watch what is happening, I tune and leave it. But once I zap on your TV and... What, Which is just a channel, just on, my a channel on my box. I just said, oh, this TV is boring. This channel is boring. I switch over. So I have variety, call it music, sports, news, entertainment. So it gives people the variety and it even creates a job. Because that was one of the, 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 one of the fear that, oh, the transfer is going to be shut down. Mm. Uh, there's some many are going to talked about that dance. earlier on. Uh, it it is not the case. Uh, uh, one of the things that the digitization and endeavors to do is that you need to upgrade yourself. Some people are going to be responsible for manufacturing those decoder boxes. Some people are going to be work on the repairs. Mm -hmm. Some people are going to work on the conditional access system. Some people work on the contribution of the channels. Some people work on the RF. So a lot of faces, the EPG, the middleware, a lot of hands will need to get us those jobs done. And reality is that the population is about 160 or 180 million. Mm -hmm. So if we are going to provide 180 million decoders, that means that guy at Yanokbaja is going to be an installer for a DTH box, which means he's going to rake in 1,000 or 2,000 per installation. He's going to create a job on the street. So it's going to make the market evolve. And uh, the only thing that's going to have is that you as engineers or whoever is going to be in the broadcast industry need to do constant upgrade because it's practiced elsewhere.
Okay. Wow, it's okay. Uh, there's so much about this, Indeed, and we and can't we... just exhaust everything <laughs> at a go because uh, it has lots of you, there are lots of technical words in there, but they can still be simplified for people to understand. But the, the but take home really is the DSO, the digital switchover, switch and yes. the STBs. Yes, Those set are simple enough. STB, set, set of boxes. Set, set of boxes. Well, exactly. I know that. That's, that's what we're saying. So <laughs> simplify <laughs> them for people to know. Decoders. <laughs> Decoders. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Nee, for coming thank on the program. Yeah. And Janet, thank you for coming. Yeah. I, I know we'll still have opportunity to talk about this more as we get along, but this is where we have to end it for now. Thank you, lady and gentleman, for coming. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll, we'll, we've come to the end of this segment of the discussion now. Stay with us. We'll uh, have other discussion shortly after now.